Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got a video today on how to read a defense. Basically, in this video, I'm going to go over how to read every defense in Madden 20 pre-snap. Uh, so that way you know exactly what you're looking at uh, no matter what game mode you play and then I'm going to show you how to beat that I'm going to show you some coverage beaters for each individual uh, coverage that you see so if you want to see more videos like this do me a favor hit the like button and let me know in the comment section other than that let's go ahead and let's get right into this video I'm going to start off with a coverage that a lot of people probably have trouble with um, it's you know you got your pinch buckos you have a lot of different coverages uh, where people really just send the house on you so that's what I'm going to show you right here I got a man zero I'm going to set it up exactly like people set it up online and when I typically see this coverage I mean it's not really too hard to tell when they press like this um, certain formations will give away coverage easier than other formations uh, but on, uh, on a man zero like this one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm typically going to come out in an empty backfield look and I'm going to zig uh, these these uh, slot receivers there's a lot of different coverages there's a lot of different routes that beat man but this is probably one of the faster ones to do that especially when it comes to these slot receivers against these safeties so if I want a little extra help the tight end he's not going to do much for me so that's a scenario where I'll definitely block that uh, and then I'm just like I said I'm just gonna drop back until I have time to, to throw this this ball right here so if you ever see somebody running uh, something like a man zero that's probably one of the best ways to beat it now as far as reading the the man zero it's really simple I mean you can see how these safeties it's typically man coverages will align over their assignment so these safeties being spread wide like this there's no defense in the game that's gonna spread your safeties out like this any any formation a lot of times I mean motioning a lot of times can give it away too but you can read this right away without looking. If you come out in a three wide receiver set, like I thought it was going to let me motion this guy over here, but it doesn't let me do that. Um, if you have the opportunity to motion across a receiver across the formation, I mean, you can see how it follows and still it's it's lined up right over right over in front of him. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to give it away. But one of the easiest ways is how the safeties uh, basically align uh, straight centered over um, over the, the uh, you know, over the receiver that they're assigned to. So now we're looking at cover one. Uh, which is probably one of the lesser run defenses, but there's still, you know, I'm going to go over coverage beaters for everything. Uh, I've personally started running cover one a lot more uh, lately. Once again, I mean, the zig routes will beat cover one the same way. As far as reading the cover one, it's all about the, the outside cornerbacks once again. You know it's either cover one or cover three based off of the safety. The safety's position will always give away uh, whether it's, it's going to be either cover three or cover one. Uh, based off of this the single high safety it could be a cover two uh, cover two invert which I'll go over in a minute but it's not going to be based off the cornerback depth so looking at the cornerbacks depth and alignment you can tell they're once again the outside cornerbacks are aligned right over the receivers if I switch over to a cover three you're gonna see a slightly different look you see how now he's not aligned over him he's aligned outside so a very slight difference uh, but you can see, I mean, it's still a very, you know, it's, it's, it's the most telling thing that you can see to, to, to differentiate this between a cover three and a cover one. So now that I know it's a cover one based off of the look, uh, on the offensive side, the wheel route's really one of the better ways to go. And this will beat cover zero the same, but it just takes longer. That's why, to me, the cover, the, the zigs will work against this coverage just like they'll work against uh, cover one, cover zero, cover two. But as far as um, this play goes, you know, typically cover ones don't have a lot of blitzes behind them. So the uh, the, the wheel route's really going to be the best. Uh, against cover two, the wheel route will not work. Uh, but you can see right here, we just have, you know, that's, that's I probably should have waited through a little bit later. Maybe I'd, I'd had a bigger play. Now, as far as reading a cover two, I mean, I don't know if you can see the difference like I can see the difference. But once again, you got your cornerbacks, they're aligned right in front of their receivers. Like I said, they don't want to, if, typically, just like in real life, man coverage, you don't want to give an inside release or an outside release. You don't want to give an advantage to the inside or the outside. Now, Richard Sherman on the other side is not necessarily man aligned directly with Kelsey. Um, but you can see, I mean, they're, they're just, the alignment alone, by the way, that they're, they're right in the receiver's faces, lets you know that's a man coverage. Then you look at the safeties, and they're not man aligned with anybody. So you can see they're playing back. It looks, it looks like an obvious cover to man to me. So that's something that um, you should be able to see. They're playing soft, and they're playing off, and they're playing into a general area where the where their cornerbacks over the receivers are playing very deliberately right in front of their receivers. Now, as far as cover two, there's not a ton of cover two uh, beaters. There's some decent, you know, there's a few one-play touchdowns that I have, but I'm not really going over that in this video. This is all about adjustments you can make to beat this defense. Ziggs, once again, will beat cover two. You won't have any issues as far as time. 
to set up these zigs. Um, but you have cover two gives you a lot more opportunities because you're, you're not really going to get a ton of pass rush. So to me, uh, another adjustment that you can make, and this is once again something that I work against just about any man coverage, is you can put your outside routes here on a comeback or a curl route, pretty much the same thing. But me personally, the comeback route is probably the best way to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put my outside guys on comeback routes. Although I accidentally messed up uh, the second one there. So, like I said, right here, we got our comeback routes on the outside. And if we really want to, like I said, we, could, we don't have to take away the zigs. The zigs will work just as, just as well. So, you know, because there's two safeties deep, they're not going to give up a ton of big plays. The wheel routes will not work. Uh, but I always have the option for these comeback routes. I can always take them. I can take the zigs. Um, and a lot of these will work against, like I said, multiple man defenses. So sure, you can always do, you know, a lot of people just like to go ahead and try to hit slants. There's ways that good users can counter those slants and those drags, and they can use those because as you're going over the user's territory over the middle. I would much rather go into areas where the user is not. Cut down on the risk of throwing interceptions and still having a good play. As you can see right here, I mean, we're just, you know, there's nothing the user can do with these outside adjustments. A good user always wants to funnel their defense towards the middle. And if you make adjustments like slants, you're just doing the defensive user's job. So now looking at a cover two zone, we have the exact same look on offense. Uh, but you can see, once again, I mean, the way that the, the cornerbacks are aligned. First of all, there's no cornerback over Watkins. Anytime you have a three-wide receiver set, it will help to give away the defense. Since there's no cornerback directly over Watkins, or no defensor, uh, defensive player at all directly over him, you know it's his own coverage. Then you look at the safeties. They're basically splitting the middle half of the field. Uh, but since we see the cornerbacks, the cornerbacks on a cover two, typically we're playing at about a five-yard depth. The depth of cornerbacks and safeties in a lot of the zones going forward will basically let you know what you're looking at. So you have your outside cornerbacks about five yards. That's pretty typical. Uh, since you're both at a five-yard depth, that's pretty typical of a cover two. If you're running like a cover six or a cover nine, a lot of times one cornerback will be at a five-yard depth. The other cornerback will be at like a seven or an eight-yard depth, sometimes even a ten-yard depth because they're playing the deep half. But for now, we know we're looking at a cover two. And then, like I said, the safeties are at even depth. Once again, that's typical of cover two, not typical of those off coverages. So let's go ahead and let's make our adjustments. As far as a cover two goes, since there's not really great coverage over the middle, a lot of times streaks are really good routes. Uh, you know, you typically need something to pull the, the safeties back. Like I said right here, I mean, I have, since I, I really have my option, typically over the middle deep, uh, there's definitely a, um, you know, there's there's a gap. A lot of people might make the adjustment to take that away. Or they'll put a, a deep third of, over with one of the, the middle linebackers. But sometimes if you have enough speed, it won't really matter. And then you can also hit these guys outside, like I said, if you just spread them out. So if I just streak everybody and spread them out a lot of times in a formation like this, I can really beat uh, pretty much all these coverages. Because ultimately this outside route here, this, these cornerbacks don't drop back far enough. Moving on to uh, cover three. We have a cover three match look. Now, as far as a cover three match goes, once again, this one here, if you're just paying attention to the depth of the safeties, it looks like you have uh, what could possibly be a cover two. Now, like I said, the safeties, they're kind of off-centered a little bit, if you can see where they're aligned. Uh, they look like they're at even depth, but once the play starts, you're going to see one of the one of the safeties is going to drop. One of, the, one of them is going to fade. Now, the cornerbacks, once again, like I said, they're not at a five-yard depth. They're at about a seven, eight-yard depth. That's more indicative of a cover three look. Now, the play that I chose is really to attack the seams once again um, because, like I said, just like the last, it's the exact same play as the cover two play, but you really can expose uh, the seams uh, of cover threes. Now, here I shift the, the play, and you can see right here we turn it right into a traditional cover three look. Um, but like I said, it's cover three, as you can see, the huge gaps between the single high safety and the cornerbacks is going to expose this defense quite a bit. So cover threes, you can beat them up the seams. So now we're looking at a cover four defense, um, which, you know, like I said, I mean, the, the say, you can see how tight the space is between the two middle safeties there. They're really close together. A lot of times that's a dead giveaway of a cover four. Uh, based off of the alignment, they're just they're they're playing they're basically uh, at the hash marks from each other, uh, which is not typical. And then once again, you move to the outside safeties. The outside safeties are playing at a depth of about you know seven eight yards. That's about a, that's a dead giveaway when it comes to uh, playing off coverage. Whenever the cornerbacks are playing at about the depth that they're playing, like I said, about eight to ten yards, that's an off coverage look, uh, which is either cover three or cover four. So like I said, the real giveaway on this is the safeties. The cover three safeties don't play so close together. So we have a cover four look here. Uh, and then, you know, as far as adjustments go, as far as beating cover four, um, there's a couple different things. I mean, the comeback route is a pretty good play. The out route, 
uh, is a pretty good play, uh, which is not as good. I mean, this 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 type of uh, you know coverage beater is not as good as it is against cover three because of the adjustments they've made. But against cover four, it's a pretty good play. So, like I said, spreading out my defense once again. I guess right here, we're just going to wait for that comeback route uh, to come back. I threw it a little bit off timing. But you can see that the comeback route takes a little bit of time. A lot of people will run blitzes out of the cover four. So it's not always, uh, you know, you're not always going to have the most time. But the out route is definitely more effective. So these off coverages, you can see how they give up underneath. That's the bottom line. Uh, with something out of the cover four quarters, cover four pounds, which is something that a lot of people have trouble with. We're going to show you a, uh, a very easy way to essentially glitch this defense and really hit home runs against it. I'm using the Saints playbook. We're in the gun Taysom Hill slot uh, Saints mesh wheel. The look of a cover four quarters is pretty much the same. You can see how um, the safeties are playing at about the same depth. They're close to each other. Uh, the outside cornerbacks are playing at about the same depth. So as far as an indicator to give this play away, one of the bigger ones to me would probably be the spacing from the cornerbacks to the safeties. I would say that would make the most sense. That's the type of spacing you might see from a cover two. But typically cover two safeties are not this close together. Cover two safeties typically are further apart. So that's one of the easiest ways I think to, uh, to dictate or to, uh, to read a defense like a cover four quarters. So that's probably the, the most uh, giveaway look when it comes to the cover four match and the cover four quarters. Uh, as far as beating a cover four quarters, once again, not really um, a lot of, uh, you know, pre-snap adjustments you can make, but uh, there is a definite way to beat cover four quarters. And what that is, is you need five routes. I have five routes at the line. There's four, uh, they're really going to split the defense into four quarter covers. So one of them is going to get wide open. That's pretty much the easiest way to beat cover four quarters. And in this particular play, I know it's going to be the X route. For whatever reason, the X route is going to get by in a pretty glitchy fashion. Now, one of the harder things about it is you can see right there, I got sacked. Uh, because I, you know, I don't necessarily have um, the blocking, but like I said, there is definitely ways to, to, to beat this play for a home run touchdown. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. Hopefully I don't have that, that problem. But you can see right here, the X route gets way past the defense uh, because like I said, it's just, it's not the best defense. There's, there's really, just the way the cover four quarters works, it typically prioritizes the underneath routes. So let's go ahead and let's do this one more time. Like I said, we have four short routes and one deep route. And these, these defensive, these safeties are going to cover the, uh, the the short routes before they cover the deep routes. Look how this safety bails and just lets this guy go across the field. That's pretty much, you know, like I said, four short routes, one deep route. You're going to get this look with the deep route most times. And I don't know, you know, that's why I don't use a play like this. Uh, but that's a really easy play. So now we're in a cover two, show nine. Um, you know, or cover nine, show two. My bad, I got that backwards. Uh, it's going to be pretty different. I mean, it's going to be pretty similar to a cover six. It's pretty much the same idea. Cover six is basically just flipped. Uh, but you can see here, I mean, if you look at the diagram, you have a cover four quarters on one side and a cover two on the other side. And that's pretty much the exact same look that you're going to have pre-snap if you take away the uh, the diagram here. You see you got your five on the left side. You split the field in half. On the left side, you got your five-yard depth, which is your cornerback. He's at about a five-yard depth. Tip indicative of a cover two all day, every day. On the other side, you have a the cornerback's at a different depth. He's at a cover three, cover four depth. But there aren't any plays that are cover two on one side, cover three on the other side. So you know it has to be a cover four on the other side, making it a cover six or a cover nine. Then you pretty much know which side the cover two side is and the cover four side is. You just split the field in half. You don't look at it as a whole. You have to split the field in half to know which side of the coverage is which. So then you can basically make your adjustments as if one side's a cover two. So this play here, I mean, I basically have, um, you know, I have my cover two, uh, adjust I have a, a high low. This is something I already showed you guys pretty much. Uh, you have to streak your cover two guy back to pull the safety back, and then you have your, your short route here. So making this look like your same cover two adjustments is going to have the same effect. So right here we know we have our cover two side. The Y route beats right outside just like a typical cover two. Don't make it more difficult than it is. You know what I mean? It's a cover two on one side. It might be called something else, but it's a cover two. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's all it is. Cover two on one side, cover four cores on the other side. Now the cover four core side is a little bit harder to attack based off of the fact that it's a little bit uh, a little bit more finicky. Um, but, uh, you know, it's basically what the play is. So that's your look. Um, and that's pretty much, you know, like I said, the cover four, I need the way that you beat the cover four quarters. I already pretty much showed that. And it doesn't really work in this particular scenario. So if you can read this defense, I'd say the best way to beat it is on the cover two side. Just use your cover two adjustments. That's probably the best way to do it.
Now this play here, I don't know, pre pre patch it used to beat this play with no adjustments. You can see right here. I don't even need I don't even need the motion over that receiver. Um, but you know, this is without a doubt one of the better uh, one of the better cover cover four cover nine plays. I'm sorry, cover six cover nine plays in the game. So now we're looking at a cover two invert. Uh, which you know the thing about cover two inverts is uh, I'm trying to get off this cornerback here is the uh, this the, it looks like a cover three pre snap but a lot of times the 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 deep safety is just playing at a shorter depth that's one of the ways that you can really give away this play is this guy here is just playing a lot more shallow because it's not his job to drop all the way back like it was in previous plays so that's definitely one of the um, one of the best giveaways as far as um, a cover two invert these cornerbacks we're playing at about a eight yard depth once again like I said looking just like a cover three uh, but you can also tell post snap too once I snap the ball um, you're gonna see how a lot of times that cornerback just really drives uh, towards the middle so it's really you know that's that's definitely something you can make a post rat the snap read on and then just like a regular cover too I mean the the over the middle stuff is going to be uh, where you can beat it the easiest because typically there's a huge gap this the plays designed to confuse you pre snap it's not designed to uh, necessarily stop you post snap more after watching this video if you watch it to the end you will not have a problem beating cover four anymore so starting off I'm just gonna start off with some simple adjustments I guess I'll start off with a specific play uh, the hitch corner uh, which is a play that I just put out um, there's a lot of plays in here that really would fit the bill. I'm also going to show uh, the empty Y Saint. This is probably the one that I use the most going back, um, you know, a while now. Uh, so I'll start off with the Saints fork. Like I said, the play doesn't necessarily matter. I'm just going to show you uh, the concept really that matters. And then, like I said, the play that I'm attacking today is the cover four drop show too. So like I said, it doesn't really matter. I'm not necessarily showing this um, to, uh, to show this particular play. This is kind of a combination of concept and play. Uh, what you have on the right side there with Cook, uh, the RB route, and the A and the B route, those three routes right there are pretty much going to make up one of the easier concepts to beat a defense like this. So all I'm going to do, I mean, I don't have to really do anything. This, this should beat it just like this, but I want to put the B route on a streak because I'm pretty much isolating on that outside uh, quarter, which is that cornerback. I want to draw him back. He's the most important thing right now and what I'm going to attack on this play. So putting him on a streak, drawing him back, and then the RB route really just comes out right over the top of it. That's one of the weaknesses of this particular defense is the outside. As long as you stretch back these outside corners, I mean, it's the same thing on the other side. I just don't have a route really. Uh, that's doing, you know, that, that that's going to work in this scenario because you also need something to pull underneath. You can see right here, there's no route, there's no receiver pulling the coverage down under underneath uh, where the curl, where the hook flat is, um, so it's not necessarily going to work. Now you can once again, like I said, it's it's the same type of concept. I can try to draw um, him down with uh, with Cook, not necessarily going to work out too great. Um, but this is probably the best option I have. This might create a throwing window of some kind, but you can see it just doesn't really work out. You need something that goes a little bit deeper, and that's why these corner routes, which is what RB is running, typically work better. So, like I said, it's the same type of triangle concept that I've put out in cover two scenarios. If you've seen what, when I do cover two defenses, it's the same type of idea. You need something high, you need something low. You just have to isolate one of the zones that you're trying to attack. So, like I said, right here one more time. You know, I mean, I, it's, it's not the biggest window, but it's there. You're seeing I'm beating it pretty much every time. So now I'm in the hitch corners play, which, like I was saying, is pretty much the exact same concept. Got to pull that cover four quarter uh, corner back with the B route. Need something underneath to create separate to pull that 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 curl flat down, and then the RB route's going to get open under top, uh, over the top. I mean, it's pretty simple. You know I mean, there's not really too much to it. It's just the throw window is not necessarily huge, but it's there. I could also get that effect uh, if I want to motion across. It's just going to be the exact same thing. You just need three wide receivers, and then you can see how um, you know this is basically the uh, this is basically the concept right here. And then, like I said, throwing window isn't huge. I mean, you have a lot of zones dropping back. It's not going to be huge, but you can see how that's the concept that you need to use to beat this defense. So now I'm just going to pick a random play. So obviously, it gave me a run play, but that's fine. So we're just going to pick a random pass play. It doesn't really matter. So really, how you want to beat? Once again, you always want to have a guy to the sideline. One of your receivers has to be to the sideline to have um, the effect that I'm going for here because, once again, you're still trying to isolate that cover four outside uh, corner. So now that I have one guy at the sideline, even though, like I said, I would have preferred to pick a, a formation with that so I can have both guys at the sideline, all I really need to do is a couple different hot routes that really work. The best one for cover four is definitely, uh, definitely going to be the out route, smart route at 10 yards. 
Um, this is going to beat this coverage. I don't, I don't want this fullback to get in the way. He's running some sort of route that could mess that up. But if I isolate that cornerback one more time, put him on an out route, and then smart route him at 10 yards, the second he breaks outside, even though I get a bad throw, you can see how he's outside of the cornerback four every time. So here we go once again. Like I said, it's giving me a lot of run plays, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and let's do this. Like I said, I'll, I'll motion this guy to the sideline. I'll put the B on a streak just to get him out of the way. And then this is going to be a good play at about 10 yards. Like I said, I can just steal this all game. You can see he's getting outside of that. Your opponent, if you just do that enough, your opponent's going to have to abandon running cover four because there's nothing they can do about it. Here's another scenario. I don't know why they keep giving me run plays. Here's another scenario. Um, ultimately, like I said, I'd like to have a formation where both receivers are out. It won't really work from in like this because this way your, your, your uh, opponent can't uh, do something. Like a lot of times if, if they realize what you're doing, They'll just use that cornerback and try to take away that one route. So that's why I'd rather be in a formation where both receivers on the outside or, or to the uh, to the boundary, so you can have that effectiveness on both sides. Because like I said right here, you're going to see B route the B route being so far in, he doesn't get that window. So now I'm going to look like that, um, where I have the, the the receivers to the boundary on both sides. Uh, once again, the out routes would work. Uh, if you don't know how to put them on an out route, it's just the, you know, it's right there. It's the D-pad to the left, and then I'd have to do it over again and hit the RB, which is the smart route at the bottom. So you can do that. Um, another decent option is the comeback routes. The comeback routes are okay. I don't think they're as good as the um, as the uh, the out routes, but you could always do those. Uh, to me, I mean, the flat route there is meant to pull coverage back. You can see it gets there. Once again, poor timing, bad throw. I'm not a huge fan of out routes, unless it's man coverage. Man coverage, I'll do that out route all game. Uh, but you can see, I mean, he does get left alone by himself. So, you know, that's another good option. But there are things, to me, the timing on an out route, for whatever reason, can get messed up a little bit easier uh, than the out routes. I don't know why. Uh, but you can see, just if you just don't time it perfectly, a lot of times it can be off. So it's a little bit funky. Out routes, comeback routes, uh, those are really good uh, for this. And that's probably the best adjustments you can make. There are probably aren't a, not a lot of other good ones. Uh, if you do something like a zig, uh, you're not going to get deep enough. But you can see, you can you can get a zig for five. All these things that attack to the boundary are going to be what works out. So, I mean, zigs, it's because this is one of the issues being to the boundary. Because you're so close to the boundary, even if you catch it, you can't really turn up and get much more than that. And then last but not least, we're going to go over a home run. Uh, a, a cover, um, once again, I'm using the... Uh, and then last but not least, we're going to go over a home run concept for cover four, uh, which should make this even easier. I'm using one out of the gun Y off trio week. Um, th uh, once again, I'm in the Saints playbook, so uh, you can see that there. Uh, but the play that I'm going to use is the PA post dig shot. I'll try to find a couple other variations so you can find these in your own particular playbooks. Uh, but it's really just the route, the red route that is being run on this play is probably the most important thing. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. If you can find that red route, you should be good. Um, if you can find that red route in your playbook uh, where he's to the boundary once again, they always have to be to the boundary when it comes to these type of plays. But if you can find that red route, you should be able to augment what I'm going to show you to this particular, to that particular play that's in your book. So this play actually works out pretty good just like this, but since the patch, I find that it works best if you just put this other boundary receiver, uh, the B route here, into a smoke screen. And that's pretty much all you have to do. This is pretty much the setup. All I'm going to do really, I just want to kind of buy my time, get outside typically. Uh, but you can see once he gets past that cornerback right there, he gets bumped a little bit, but you can see that, that I mean, that bump, probably took away a little bit of his acceleration but you can see how easily um, you know this this type of play can be to cover four for a home run just because of all of this routes doing all this routes doing he's breaking I mean I used to do it a couple different ways but he's breaking it about 20 yards like I said that bump right there kept him from being way gone but you can see I mean even with Michael Thomas who's not really one of my fastest he's not a fast receiver you know what I mean I don't have in the I mean, Ted Ginn's the fastest guy, but I didn't even bother to change it because I know this play is going to work. But you can see, just that little bit of contact is what kept him from being probably five yards gone rather than just two yards gone. Uh, but let's watch what's happening on the other side because that's what's important. So this cornerback, technically this cornerback is supposed to handle that. But he's kind of ISOed once again. And once again, I'm always ISOing this guy. And he's ISOed to this receiver right here who doesn't run around at all. He just stops. So that's going to make him just basically fall off a cliff where he just kind of stays the lowest at all the, the deep four corners. And that's why um, it helps to get this guy across. Not to mention this guy right here too. He kind of bites on this crosser here, which is why I can't change that. 
because he all these things are just small uh, variances when it comes to the defensive coverage but you can see the effect that it's having so let's go ahead and let's end the video there uh, like I said I should have shown you just about every single way you can beat that defense to get your opponent uh, to pretty much abandon that defense you shouldn't have a problem with it anymore if you follow these concepts these plays uh, these adjustments you have a million different ways to beat cover four so if you want to see more videos like this let me know in the comment section with the like button I'll do that next other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below